This 10th gen iPad with that A14 chip is actually offering some great Nintendo Wii emulation performance here. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out some emulation and gaming on the new 10th gen iPad from Apple. Recently on the channel, we took a look at the 2022 iPad Air with the M1 chip, and we also took a look at the brand new iPad Pro with the M2 chip, and when it comes to gaming and emulation, both of them were very impressive. But since those videos, I've had a lot of people ask me to test out the basic iPad. So here it is. And to tell you the truth, I'm pretty impressed by the performance this thing's putting out right now. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I'm a huge Android tablet fan, but uh, when it comes to the higher-end Android tablets nowadays, they are getting pretty expensive. The last major high-end Android tablet that I picked up was the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, and that came in at around $1,100 when I bought it. So taking a look at one of these for that $450 price tag, and they do go on sale all the time for $399, this isn't a bad deal, but we do have some setbacks, because obviously this is running iPad OS, and with Apple we can't easily sideload our apps. Now there are ways around it, and I'll talk about that in a second, because obviously we're going to be testing out some emulation, like PSP and GameCube and Wii running on this 10th gen iPad. But before we get into testing, I wanted to give you a quick rundown on the specs. So for the CPU, this is using the Apple A. 14. It's a six core CPU. We've got two larger cores running at three gigahertz and four smaller cores running at 1.8. When it comes to the lower end iPads, Apple always uses one of their CPUs that's a couple generations behind from their newer iPhones, but this is still putting out some really great performance. We've got that four core Apple GPU, four gigabytes of RAM. You can opt for 64 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of internal storage. No micro SD cards on these Apple devices. It's got a 10.9 inch liquid retina IPS display at 1640 by 2360 with up to 400 nits of brightness. Not the best display that I've seen, but it looks good for the price here. We've got stereo speakers, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and a 28.6 watt hour battery, and they're claiming up to 10 hours of battery life, and I could definitely see that happening with the brightness on the screen around 60%, you know, web browsing and video playback. Another thing I want to mention here with the 10th Gen iPad is they finally swapped over from the Lightning connector and moved to USB Type-C. Now this might not be a big deal to people who have been using Android phones for a long time, but with these lower end iPads it was always Lightning, and this USB Type-C port does support video out, so we can actually connect this to a larger display quite easily. So I've had about a week to mess around with the 10th Gen iPad, and overall UI experience, very snappy here. The A14 has more than enough power to run iPad OS 16.2, and that's what I'm updated to right now. And you know, when it comes to gaming, easy enough, all we need to do is head over to the App Store, we can download our favorite games from there. If you use Apple Arcade, there's also tons of stuff over here to mess around with, but you know, when it comes to emulation on the iPhone or the iPad, it's a bit different from Android. We can't just easily sideload an APK like we do on Android. And fingers crossed, hopefully this changes down the road. It would be really nice to just easily do it. But there are ways around it. My go-to method right now is Alt Store. Basically, this is going to allow us to sideload applications on our iPad or our iPhone. And we're going to use our own free Apple developer account to do this. And with a free Apple developer account, we can only sideload up to three applications. And Alt Store is going to take up one of those spots. So right now, I've actually got the standalone version of PPSSPP so we can emulate some PSP games. And I've also got Dolphin iOS, which will allow us to emulate Wii and GameCube games. And the A14 chip does really well with GameCube and Wii. On the newer versions of iOS and iPad OS, they actually offer some really great controller support. You can use a PS4, PS5, or an Xbox One controller very easily. We can actually navigate the full operating system with an Xbox One controller, and this is what we're going to be playing our games and emulators with in this video. But the first thing I did was run a couple benchmarks, and here we have Geekbench 5, single core coming in with a 1579, multi 4032. Comparing this to the Snapdragon Gen 1 Plus, which is a higher end chip that's used in gaming phones for Android, the highest single core I ever got on one of those devices, which actually used active cooling, has a built-in fan, was 1,389, and we did beat out the A14 in multi on that device. Next up, we've got 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. This is a Vulcan benchmark for the GPU. On the 10th Gen iPad, we got a total score of 2,106, 
and the highest score I ever got on my Snapdragon Gen 1 Plus phone was 2,614. So with this Vulcan benchmark, yeah, that Snapdragon Gen 1 Plus is beating out the A14, and you know, I kind of expected that it would. It's definitely a newer chip. And the final benchmark I ran was Antutu, and it's really hard to compare this with Android because this actually uses the Metal API, which is specific to these iOS devices and Mac devices. But with this, we got a total score of 682,797. But all of those are synthetic benchmarks, and they're really not representative of real-world performance. So let's go ahead and move over to some gaming right now. And the first one here is Call of Duty Mobile. Now, uh, this is a very well-optimized game, but I've got this maxed out on the 10th gen iPad. I've downloaded the HD texture pack. You know, once you boot the game up, you can go low res or high res, and it runs perfectly fine on this device. Next on the list, we've got Genshin Impact, and I want to apologize for the recording here. This was actually only recorded at 1080p 30. My camera had an update, and I forgot to swap it back to 4K. But from the settings, we're going to highest, and we're also going to set the frame rate to 60fps. Now this new 10th gen iPad can definitely handle it, it actually works out really well. And one of my favorite things about, you know, the iOS version of Genshin Impact is we've got controller support. We don't have to use any kind of third-party plugins or third-party apps to get the controller working. Yes! And I'm just using that Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. Uh, game looks great here at the highest settings, and we're able to run it at 60 FPS. Even on some of the higher-end Snapdragon chips like the 888 and even the Gen 1, I've got a lot of issues at highest settings 60 FPS on some devices that I've tested. And of course, a lot of that comes down to optimizations from the developers themselves, and I think they do pay a bit more attention to the iOS version, because uh, like I mentioned, we've got controller support here, which is something we've been wanting on Android for a very long time. Now it's time to take a look at some emulation, and like I mentioned, I've used Alt Store to sideload these. I'm using a standalone version of PPSSPP, and from the settings, we're using the OpenGL backend, we're at 5x resolution with no hacks, and I'll tell you, as long as the game's compatible with this emulator, it's going to run it at full speed. But we're going to start off light here. Tony Hawk's Underground 2 Remix. Still got that Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth, and there was no mapping I needed to do whatsoever with this emulator. It just detected it. It's already ready to go. Moving up to something a little harder to emulate, I consider this a mid-range game. Tekken 6. Still at 5x resolution, OpenGL back in, and I didn't even swap over to Vulkan because OpenGL works so well. And I'm sure even with Tekken 6 here, we could probably go up to 8x resolution, but 5x is already basically maxing out the iPad's display here. But uh, as we know, there are harder to emulate PSP games, mainly comes down to the God of War series. So here's Chains of Olympus, no settings were changed, OpenGL, 5x, full speed with this one. I also tested Ghost of Sparta, another one that runs really well on this 10th gen iPad. So we're good to go with PSP on this tablet, and I suspected we would be. Next thing we're going to be testing out is some GameCube and Wii emulation, and I'm using Dolphin iOS. This is a great emulator, works on iPhone and iPad, obviously. From the settings, we've got basically everything that we need to mess around with. This is going to be using the Vulkan backend. I will enable VSync here, and we're going to go up to 1080p. Now on the new iPad Pro with the M2 chip, we can emulate basically anything we want at 4K. But with this, I think we're right there at about 1080p with that A14 chip. Metroid Prime, 1080p, Vulkan backend really great performance. Now there was one game that I tested that I really couldn't get good performance with and we'll take a look at it by the end of this emulation segment, but uh, it really comes down to the emulator itself. I'm pretty sure we've got enough power to do that game at full speed. With iOS or iPad OS 16.2 there have been some issues with Dolphin iOS and uh, we do have to disable dual core with some of these games and Rogue Squadron 2 is definitely one of them. That's the game we'll test by the end, but even F-Zero GX Dual core enabled, 1080p, Vulcan back in on the hardest track to emulate, runs at full speed. I also tested Simpsons Hit and Run and Automotolista, one of my favorite racing games. That one will also run at 1080p. We weren't having any issues there. 
Moving over to a Wii game, one of my favorite fighting games, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, still at 1080. And the final one I wanted to show off was Rogue Squadron 2. Vulcan back in, native GameCube resolution. We're only using one core here. We had to disable dual core. So as soon as Dolphin iOS, you know, becomes fully compatible with 16.2, I'm pretty sure we'd be able to run this at 720p. And the very last thing I wanted to take a look at was some game streaming using Steam Link. But instead of using the built-in screen on the iPad, we're going to be using an external display. This display does support USB Type-C video in, and we've also got some USBs on the rear plus Ethernet. All of that will work with the iPad connected with this single cable here, and as you can see, we can mirror the display. Now we do have some black bars on the side, and unfortunately there's really no way to get rid of this inside of the UI, but it doesn't mean that app developers can't support external monitors, because Steam Link actually works in full screen when you're connected to an external monitor. And I'm actually streaming from my main PC, and on the external display, it went full screen for me. So I'm using the latest beta of Steam, and we've got that GamePad UI, very reminiscent of the Steam Deck. And this iPad does have Wi-Fi 6 built in, so when I'm set up in the house with my gaming PC connected over Ethernet, I can actually stream up to 120 FPS. And even on the built-in display, it looks great. I just kind of wanted to show off this external monitor support also. I think it's pretty cool that some of these apps do support full screen on an external display. But we'll go with uh, Cyberpunk 2077. And there's very minimal latency because I'm on my home network. I've got a pretty decent router. We've got Wi-Fi 6 here with the iPad and my main PC is connected over Ethernet. So I really haven't run into issues with Steam Link in the house. Now out and about, if I wanted to connect the iPad itself to let's say a hotspot on a 5G phone, I could do 60 as long as I have a good connection. So overall, the new 10th gen iPad actually does a great job with emulation and gaming, but we are limited here because it's running iPad OS. We just can't easily sideload anything. Of course, you can use a third party app or sideload over Xcode if you wanted to, but it would be really nice if in the future Apple allowed us to kind of just flip a switch and sideload what we want. I think that would be really awesome and hopefully it is coming because these iPads and iPhones do offer really great performance when it comes to gaming and emulation. They're just a bit locked down for a lot of people out there. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on the 10th gen iPad, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, maybe pick one of these up. I'll leave some links in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.